I'm Elena. And I'm Kira. And you're watching BGTV. Coming up on this episode, we'll join Gianna as she sheds light on No Shave November. We'll head over to the football field to check out the results of the semifinal game. Dimitra will bring us to Taft, where she'll cover this year's pumpkin run. Let's head over to Vern Allen Park to check out the dog parade. And lastly, we have Joe with the flow. <laughs> Let's learn about No Shave November from Gianna. Oh, hey, you didn't see there. It's Gianna, and it's finally November. You know what that means. It's No Shave November. Let's go see what WHS is doing this month. Um, no Shave November is to turn the focus onto the men. Um, we find that a lot of times men don't really kind of talk about their cancer issues. Um, so we find that it's really important to help out, reach out, and, and put that awareness in the spotlight that men also go through various cancers. So No Shave November is a way to kind of grow it and show it. So Mr. Leonard, are you participating in No Shave November? I have to participate. I can't take this off. This is stuck. Are you participating in No Shave November? Yes, I am. A while ago, I think like 2012, 2013, uh, a bunch of teachers were eating lunch, and uh, we decided we all wanted to grow mustaches that year. So we did this thing called March Stash, and we started um, getting money together for fundraising for prostate cancer awareness. So like story story goes, my dad was diagnosed with prostate cancer. So when that happened, I really started looking into all of the research, and a lot of things came down to like a lot of funding. I participate because it helps to raise awareness for all sorts of different cancers and it just leads to an extra conversation that someone might bring up. Why am I participating in No Shave November? Is to raise awareness so that we can all get screened for certain cancers and make sure we're taking care of ourselves. And how do you maintain the beard? It just kind of naturally happens. When you don't have hair, what happens is you spend a lot more time on your beard. So whenever I cut my hair, it's more or less kind of like brr, less kind of like brr, less kind of like brr. I use beard oil, I use uh, cream on my face so that it doesn't get so itchy, uh, but by the end of the month it is pretty scraggly, yes. So can you just explain to me what Wizards Against Cancer Club is? Sure. Um, so Wizards Against Cancer Club is this really great um, student driven and actually student created club. We get out and about, we do a lot of activities, um, we have a team on the No Shave November site that people can join and support. Um, we have little like mustache rings or like fuzzy mustaches people can put on and it's just really about showing the guys that we got their back. That's all I have for you for No Shave November this week. I can't do this anymore. Were you able to check out the Pine Bush football game? No, I wasn't. How'd it go? Let's head over to sports to find out what Nick has to say. Hey Wizards, it's Nick Merkey here with Wizards Sports. The fall sports season is coming to a close, which means that it's time for sections. The football team lost 35-13 to in a tough battle against Pine Bush on Saturday. Great season, Wizards. We're all proud of you. The cross-country team had their section meet on Wednesday at Bear Mountain. The volleyball team also had their first game in sections on Wednesday at Valley Central. Girls Swimming had their section meet on Thursday at Valley Central as well. We'll check back next week to see how those teams did. Now, let's take a closer look at the football section semifinal game. I'm Nick Murky here at the varsity football section semifinal game against Pine Bush. After a tough loss in the homecoming game, let's see if Washingtonville can bounce back to beat Pine Bush to advance to the finals. I'm here with Marino Santillo. Now, I know you guys just lost your section semifinal game against Pine Bush. Now, tell me how you're feeling. Um, it was a rough game. Uh, we should have been able to win that game, but we did not um, execute our scheme and what we had to do to win that game. Now, how are you feeling going into your senior year playing football? Uh, I'm excited because I um, get to lead a team and be able to be a captain and lead how we're supposed to be and execute our plans for the future. What kind of training are you guys going to be doing in the off season so that you can come out with a better result next year? Um, go to the weight room, get faster, stronger, whatever we got to do to succeed. Thank you. I'm here with two of the Lady Wizards after an upsetting loss against Pine Bush. 
How are you feeling after your last varsity football game? Honestly, it's kind of bittersweet because I am a senior and it's my last time cheering with all my friends on the field. And the boys, they put up a good fight this season and I couldn't have asked for anything better. But, you know, there's always next year. How does it feel going into your senior year of cheering? I'm excited and I can't wait for next year to just come back stronger as a new team and excited. That's a wrap on the 2019 Wizards football season. I'll catch you on the flip side. Not many people realize how impactful letting your car run is, like in the morning before school in the parking lot. Although it might not seem like a big deal, letting your car run while it's on is actually detrimental to the modern engine, wastes gas, and causes environmental damage. You can waste almost a gallon of gas if you leave your car idling for more than an hour. As the primary contributor to global warming, carbon dioxide emissions are speeding up the process of global warming. For every 10 minutes that your engine is off, you'll prevent one pound of carbon dioxide from being released into the atmosphere. The best possible method of eliminating idling emissions is to simply not idle. It might be uncomfortable to approach someone who is sitting in their car, but explain and educate them about the benefits of eliminating idling and maybe they will just roll down the window and enjoy a breeze instead. Washingtonville High School will be hosting its annual food drive from November 18th to November 22nd. Please bring non-perishable foods and place them in the boxes provided at the front desk. United States Army will have an informational table set up during all lunches on Monday, November 18th for any students interested in speaking with them. There's going to be a blood drive in the high school library from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Tuesday, November 19th. Donors must be at least 16 years old and weigh a minimum of 110 pounds and not have donated within the last 56 days. Forms will be available during lunch in the main office and the JROTC bunker. Remember to have your consent form signed and a picture ID available. The Guidance Office will be hosting Instant Admission Days in December, Wednesday, December 4th at 10 p.m. with Mount St. Mary College and Thursday, December 5th at 11.15 a.m. with SUNY Orange. If you are interested in signing up for the Instant Admission Days, please stop by the Guidance Office. Remember how much fun the pumpkin run was in elementary school? No, unfortunately, my school didn't have it, I don't think. Then you'll love this next segment because Demetra will give you an inside scoop on all the fun. I'm at the starting line of the Tap Pumpkin Run. Are you guys ready to run? Yeah! So, what was your favorite part about today? My favorite part about today was getting first in the pumpkin run. My favorite part was a science teacher went to our class and helped us make slime. Do you carve any pumpkins? And if you did, what did you carve? Um, I carved one pumpkin and I made a spooky, scary, like, skeleton face. I'm going to carve the pumpkin that I'm going to get from the run, and I'm going to carve a ghost into it. Well, I didn't carve my pumpkin yet, but I'm going to carve something weird and spooky. Did you guys train for the pumpkin run today? Uh, we started practicing October 1st till today, and we kept trying to beat our, rec our record. What are you guys gonna be for Halloween? Well, I'm gonna be Cookie Monster from Sesame Street. Um, me and Amelia decided together, and I'm going to be Oscar, Oscar the Grouch. I'm gonna be a mime. Do you plan on running in high school? Yeah, um, I would like to do cross country. I would want to do everything and mostly track outside. Um, I would like to do cross country as well and outdoor track. That's all the magic I have for you today, Wizards. Run a race! Gotta run! Hey, Elena, do you have a dog? Yeah, ask why! He would have had so much fun this weekend. Now, let's head over to Vern Allen Park and check out the Dog Parade. Hey Wizards, I'm here at the second annual Woofingtonville Dog Parade. Let's go check it out. So I'm here with... Sandra Heinz, 
what inspired you to run this event? Um, it actually was an idea that a, a village member had and thought, let's run with it. So we went ahead last year and we, we just decided to start organizing it. So what, what made you guys come out and walk in the dog parade today? We just like to have fun with all the other dogs. She likes to meet all the people. Like good treats. She loves treats. That's why she's here. I have uh, the great pleasure to uh, announce the, the winner, best costume. But before I do that, I'd like to give Sandra Hines an ovation. Thank you very much for everything that you've done. So the best costume um, we voted on, and we have a delivery. We have a delivery from the UPS dog. <laughs> So how does it feel seeing all the animals here today at today's event? Oh, it's great. It's a lot of fun. I like seeing them with their little costumes and the owners that like dress up with their dogs. It's really adorable. This has been Michael Carey from BGTV signing off from this year's annual dog parade. See you guys next week. Now, everyone's favorite on the street correspondent takes us backstage of all of our school's Mask and Mime Society. Here's Joe with the flow. Hello, my friends. My name is Joe, and I welcome you to another episode of Joe with the Flow, where today we are in the auditorium, we're on stage, on set. Uh, mask and mime, and uh, let's let's take it back to the band room. See where the magic happens. I thank you for joining. Yeah. The magic of the love we share will never fade to the past, and we can turn our hopes and dreams into something that will last. Never have to say. I recently saw Beetlejuice, and it was fantastic. I saw it three times. The show Waitress. It's like a super heavy concept, like. Waitress, she's pregnant and um, she doesn't have the best home life, but she finds a way to bring out the joy in her life. Like now we're carrying on with Davis's legacy, so I feel like there's like a bit more pressure on us, but I feel like the community is really there. I feel like when I'm having a bad day, I can talk to one of my castmates. I think Masked Mom's kind of like a family, which you don't see in a lot of like other clubs. Like this is my theater mom, one of two. It's really hard to imagine where I'd be without Mask and Mime. Having such great role models in Jody Davis and Paul Davis and having made friends, lifelong friends in Mask and Mime that I still keep in touch with, that I'm still close with more than 14 years later. During Anything Goes in 2011, there was a scene at a restaurant and somebody broke a real glass cup and whoever was dressed as the waiter took the initiative to improv and they were like, oh ma'am, please let me. And then he cleaned it up and it was like the most perfect, seamless accident, but don't let the audience know it wasn't supposed to happen. Hello, I thank you for tuning in for another segment of Joe with the Flow. Today we went and we infiltrated the theater and uh, we, saw, we saw what they had to say. So uh, tune in next week. Promptly we're going to uh, we're gonna say hello to eSports. We're going to see what they like, what they're, what they're into. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go play some... Uh, I'm going to go play a little Mario Kart. Make sure to check out our weekly newsletter and podcast. That's all we have for you this week, Lizards. See you next week on BGTV. Mm -hmm.